Hello, mountain bikers of the world. This is Jeff. This is Jared. And I'm Liam. This is the MTB podcast, episode number 86. Ooh. And today we're going to talk about, um, what are we talking about again? So many things. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Everything. We're going to talk about uh, some personal stories, some uh, wild adventures we've been on lately, good challenges we have going on in the store, our recent big rides, uh, hikes, hikes, bikes. Mm. I'm doing some hikes. Hikes, bikes, outdoor we'll get stuff. To that later. That's cool. Oh, and listener questions ranging from. <laughs> Oh, everything from our own personal hair care products to how we feel about lasagna. <laughs> lasagna. <laughs> but don't worry, we'll actually toss in some real questions about bike knowledge, bike industry, all sorts of other stuff. All right, let's go. DJ Meatball, play a sound effect. Wait, don't play a sound effect. I'm going to do it with my kazoo instead. <laughs> Starting off, uh, did you guys put Jeff's Crazy Adventures slash continue slightly out of control business trips? Just, I did that, yeah. Did you write that down? Yeah, right? I wrote that down. Yeah. It makes sense. It, yeah, it kind of does make sense. Um, yeah, I mean, speaking of which, we were going to talk about rides, and I was looking at my Garmin Connect, and I was like, I haven't ridden a mountain bike since August 14th, and it's September 22nd. Oh, 22nd. Wow, what is That's that, like bad. five weeks, six weeks almost? That's bad. Mm. I know, and, and tomorrow morning I'm getting on a plane to go to Asheville, North Carolina to ride for four days, probably 20 miles a day, with Chasing Epic, doing another Worldwide Cycler collaboration trip with them, which was always really fun. But yeah, I'm going to be a little bit uh, unprepared for that. You got fresh legs, come on. I you got are, fresh legs. I, had, I have been running and hiking and doing other things. Yeah. Um, yes. I, my, my it's not like you're ever was, inactive. Yeah, true. Yeah. My excuse was that uh, leading up to August 14th, which I just mentioned before we started recording, was I did a half marathon, and then I did three days of partying and surfing <laughs> at the Kelly Slater Surf Ranch. <laughs> then I got a couple nights of sleep. Then I ran a full marathon, and then I could barely walk the next day, and I got on a plane with Raymond to go out to Colorado to test ride the new Yeti 160E e-bike, which I did on Tuesday. Oof. Wednesday, I went to a conference in Denver. Uh, the party ran late that night. It was a good conference party, and I just didn't go to sleep. I think I slept from 6.30 a.m. to 7 a.m., and then I got back in an Uber and went around and got back to the airport, went from Denver to Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, camping trip, company camping trip out there for our shop. That's always a good time. Uh, I rode like 20 miles a day out at Raystown Lake in PA, and then I woke up Sunday morning, and my body was just like, you're done. You're done, bro. It's over. Stop. And I was, I was sick, and I lost my voice, and I didn't get the Rona. Don't worry. Got tested. Fully, all, I'm all good. But I was sick and tired and just, yeah, meandered through like probably 10 days of not wanting to exercise at all. So so then I took a big break, and then I just did some hiking and some running and for some few other things, but didn't ride bikes. What about you, Jared? You riding bikes? Oh, I've been riding bikes. Um, I've actually, what are your stats, bro? <laughs> this Ton, month is Tons my of fire roads. <laughs> <laughs> some fire roads. <laughs> um, this month is actually my best month all year. I've ridden 300 miles so far since September 1st. Wow. Um, 300 miles in 22 days? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. And all mountain? Yeah. No oh. road biking. Um, yeah. Super stoked. I Well, I'm going to talk about my bike here in a little bit, but I guess, yeah, I just got a new Revel Ranger. I finished it yesterday, so I'm really excited. There, I said it. Down country bike. Down country. 115 mil travel it's in the back. Fox Float X in the rear. Yeah, you and like a, you overbuilt it. Yeah, I don't even want to say for that. I don't even say, Yeah, yeah, it's called a trail bike. It's a trail bike. Not it's, a It's gonna be bike. my one <laughs> like do it all everything bike yeah. for a little while. So and you have that's a thirty six on the one hundred and thirty mil thirty six up front. <sighs> yeah, I didn't even know they made a one thirty air spring for a thirty six. They do indeed. Hmm. I think it's the lowest travel they do in air spring for yeah. thirty six. But yeah, wow. it's amazing. It's so it's just mm. and mm. it was 30, 30 pounds five ounces. It's about thirty pounds. Yeah, thirty yeah. pounds five ounces with yeah. pedals and everything. Yeah, with pedals and, and everything. decent tires. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I love it. But yeah. Very different than Liam's Ranger. Do you still have that Ranger? Yeah, I got my Ranger. Oh, we all different. have Rangers right now. We yeah, all have Rangers. We all have Rangers right now. It is just a dialed bike for it is, yeah. where we live. My, it is most. so good. Yeah. yeah. It's so good. It's so fun. Well, if we're jumping into that, yeah. my Rangers, I think the favorite build, my favorite build I've ever had. It reminds me of an old Yeti 4.5, mm. um, which was previously, I think, my all time favorite bike, but I think this one takes the cake. Mm. I have a 130 pike up front, code RC brakes, new uh, specialized Revol control SL wheels. Those things is like feel f like feathers. Yeah, they're 1,240 grams to the 30 mil internal rim width. Ridiculous. Yeah. So it's, I think it's the best internal rim width to like weight ratio pretty much on the market with DT Swiss uh, hub internals. So like mm. a killer. And it has steel spokes. 
correct? Still spokes, yeah. But they're like straight they're bladed. pull. They're bladed. Oh, bladed. Bladed. Wow. Bladed. That's bladed <laughs> straight pull and only like 24 of them. Slick. Oh, wow. And they're not flexy? The whole wheel set isn't too Dude, flexy? Dude, I weigh 145 pounds. Yeah. Mm. I don't nice. know. Perfect. But, but I ride with a bunch of guys that are bigger and people that test test these wheels for specialized and we ride all kinds of stuff we shouldn't on them so yeah yeah, yeah revolves come a long way i remember working at a specialized shop when i was a teenager and those wheels were garbage um but that was <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. that was 15 years ago and no. those, they've come a long way yeah, yeah. and those i mean so everything specialized yeah. makes i was bikes, gonna say 15 components. years ago Everyone, everyone loved Mavic, right? and now yeah. no one loves Mavic. Yeah, they, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that yeah, Mavic true. was on their game 15 are, years ago, are they and they're still like a ghost around. Well, Good maybe question. in Europe a little bit. Yeah. I don't know. That company's changed hands a bunch of times, yeah. different ownership, and yeah, yeah, they're pretty much like nearly completely fallen out of the U.S. market. Wow. So they might still be in the European market a little bit, but I don't know. I'm not as in touch with that. How things change, eh? How things change, eh? Well, that's a nice little bike update. I, I mean, the last, actually, I haven't even been riding my Ranger at all. The last bike that I had been riding was my Revel Rascal, which that's what I'm also taking to North Carolina with me tomorrow. Nice. 130 mil travel 29er, 150 in the front. That's like, to me, that's that perfect sort of one quiver, do everything bike, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. I like that the best. I agree. Yeah. If you're going to have one. Mm hmm. I if cannot you have disagree. to only have one bike. But that's ridiculous. You should never just have one bike. <laughs> so ridiculous. <laughs> that's ridiculous. You should do everything in your power to get more than one bike, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah I agree. Even if one's like, you know, a little more budget oriented, by all means, yeah. two bikes. Yeah, totally. Speaking of bikes and riding, so I'm pretty sure the reason you've ridden so many miles, yes. Jared, is because we have a, uh, a good customer and friend of ours, Dorothy, who works at Universal Studios here in SoCal. And she uh, kindly offered us some free Universal passes. Mm -hmm. I don't really remember why. Oh, yeah, because we sponsored her on her Backbone Challenge. Oh, nice. That big ride. So, awesome. so anyways, I was like, hmm, what should we do with these Universal passes? So I figured we would just have a little challenge. And so I shot out an email to the group of uh, riders here in Cali and said, whoever rides the most mountain bike miles in the month of September gets two free Universal Studios passes. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, how's that going so far? There was there was a number um, of questions. Yeah. Like, what about road miles, gravel miles, and <laughs> then I'm and leading then, Zach right now by like 40 miles or something. So uh, I just got to keep up the pace, you know. Yeah. Um, but the other reason why I'm riding so many miles is because I signed up for a triathlon, which I told you about. Oh yeah. And so I'm kind of like training for that and okay. trying to like slim yeah. down a little bit. Trying after, to get fit. After this yeah. month's over, we'll go over like real training yeah. and how to stagger yeah. your, your rides. After, yeah. After this <laughs> month is over, I'm actually gonna start running and swimming. So. <laughs> when, when's the triathlon? Late October. End of October. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. really excited for yeah, that. We'll, we'll go into recovery and stagger mode instead of just riding as much as you can. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And so you'll win your universal tickets and then we'll get you recovered for Perfect. your triathlon. Yeah. That'll why why aren't you in the lead for this universal thing, really? Uh, because what I just mentioned, I stagger my rides and I like to yeah. like <laughs> block out the my miles. So you're not yeah. just trying to win? So I'm not just, I, I'm not, honestly, I, I didn't even start logging my miles. Someone else started putting them on there for me. Mm. Um, and I'm. It's too cool. It does a lot of gravel no, I'm riding, riding too. I'm riding gravel because uh, in three days from now, I'm doing a 125-mile gravel race. Oh, that's cool. Belgian waffle thing? Belgian waffle ride in Cedar City. Um, so that's that cool. kind of a last-minute uh, agreement to do that. And I haven't ridden over 100 miles. Well, I rode 99 miles about a year ago, and I haven't ridden over 100 miles since, like, 2016. Wow. So we're just going to go for it, but that's why I haven't been riding that much mountain bike. Uh, and Jeff put the rule in for this challenge of a 2.3 width tire. Um, <laughs> well, because someone was like, oh, what about road bikes? But, what about gravel bikes? And I was like, well, I'll just say 2.3 tire. But you can ride whatever terrain you want in a 2.3 tire. So we have someone here that likes to game every game, <laughs> game the system on every game we've ever had. And he's commuting 50% road, 40% dirt, 10% single track on his ride to work to get in these miles and he's in second place to jared and jared's crushing him while riding real trails so props mm -hmm. to jared and he's uh, forcing me to ride pretty much two hours a day of actual trails which you know thank you but also like <clears throat> damn it yeah but i mean the the same rule like you could just go ride your mountain bike on the street too if you wanted yeah but the or thing just is go ride the edison fire road i just i'm not going to stoop that low <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> sorry. Yeah. sorry, Zach, but no, I'm going to continue it, to ride I don't real think trails. He's just, he's, it's not like he's just doing blatant road rides on his mountain bike. Oh, no, he knows exactly his, what he's doing. He's doing his commutes, <laughs> which happen to include a decent amount of road, but also include some single track and some dirt. Yeah. I mean, it's like the same. His, I, I did his commute on 35C Slicks last weekend. Yeah, I mean, you could so. ride that on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here's how I interpreted it. The challenge is, you know, mountain bike miles, right? Because yeah. if you wanted to make it, who can ride their bike to the shop the most, you know, in a month? And, you know, <laughs> we can all win that, right? <laughs> Everybody can ride their bike to the shop. <laughs> but, you know, who's actually going to ride trails? What's, what, what do you propose the rules are for the next challenge? Oh, I got it. We have to measure the width of the no, single no, no. track trail and make sure it's no <laughs> wider than 36 inches. Yeah. No, no, Evaluate I'm, the surface. I'm just going to change from miles for next month's uh, universal Ooh, tickets. Elevation gain, right? To elevation gain. Yeah, that's no, a good challenge. No matter what bike you're on, because a thousand feet on a road I'm bike, a thousand feet on a mountain bike, still hard. And it can include hiking miles too, because I mean, you don't hike that much elevation, yeah. right? So yeah, I mean, if you get, I, I think that's a good way to do it. Because elevation like, gain, period. But no, no bike parks allowed. No bike, well, because you don't gain anything. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, that that's still going to have to be count. an asterisk. Okay, someone's going to go to yes. Big Bear and hit the lift twenty Ele times. Elevation, now, so. real, what is close already? Real yeah, elevation okay. pedaling. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Only, Big Bear's only, close. So okay. Good. Only rule is no e-bikes, no lifts, self-powered uphill feats or bikes. I think that's yeah. fair, because then, like, well, we'll if do, I go we'll crush a huge ride that's like ten miles, but Zach still just rides into work, then my miles have more weight. Correct. Makes sense. Yeah. All right, I'm in. Well, we'll do that for November because yep. October was going to be a can jam challenge. Yeah, and plus I don't want to. Not everyone here <laughs> I don't is, my is legs. <laughs> able or wants to ride that many miles or elevation, so we're going to do yeah. can jam. If you don't know what can jam is, you have this little thing that looks like a trash can, and you throw a frisbee in it. Is that a good description of the yeah, game? That's a good. Yeah, Pretty much. Go on yeah. YouTube and type in can jam if you're yeah. curious. It's a fun like a. Uh, yard game. Yeah, yard game. Yeah. I guess you could call that. Also, maybe whoever gets the tickets should. Have to, you know, like they can't get him twice in a row or something. I that should be fair, right? You uh, can win world championships four times in a row if you want, true. right? Yeah, all-time champion, dude. You cool. can do that. All right, Come so on. somebody uses <laughs> Yeah, okay, cool. So you're going to try and Can Jam next month. Maybe yeah, well, shit. <laughs> How many times can you go to Universal without getting sick of it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't been there in years. Seems like Me a fun neither. place, though. Well, Neither. that's an update on what's going on at WC and a bit in insight into our lives. And now we've got some good listener questions. We've got a lot of listener questions, some of which were highly inappropriate, but also <laughs> comical. So thank yeah. you for everyone who sent those in. FBI Matt, that's you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, they were good, and we got a lot of good legitimate questions as well, and we picked our favorite ones. Um, yeah, that range from, I don't know, a whole bunch of stuff. So let's jump into it after... An ad from one of our sponsors. Ooh. Do you desire capability, capacity, and coolness? Enter the Chrysler Voyager. All your desires will be fulfilled. Starting at $39,399 to your local Chrysler Voyager dealer. Listener questions. Starting off with, it's a good range of questions we got here. Best way to bed in new brake pads. Internet advice is all over the place. Mm. Here's my advice. What I did several years ago is I actually just read the directions on some brakes. Whoa. What? Yeah, I read the directions. No. But no one's ever done that, huh? Speechless. <laughs> yep. See what I'm saying? Wow. And here's what it said to do. It said to pedal up to speed to about 20 miles an hour or so on a slight downhill or flat, whatever you have, and then grab the brakes kind of gently, both brakes, same time, and come to a slow roll, not a stop, a mm -hmm. roll, big, and let off. Big emphasis. Do not come to a complete stop. Yeah, exactly. Slowly. For about, so, what, pedal up five to, speed. to ten times? Exactly, and then let them cool off a little bit and do another five to ten times. Pretty simple. Yep. Yeah. It's not too complicated. The major things to avoid, don't come to a complete stop. Don't drag them down a hill. That's extremely bad. That'll glaze over the pads and ruin the rotor for its life and make it squeal and not perform well. It makes a huge difference. If you break in your brake pads properly and bed your rotors in, the brakes perform so much better. And I might say for everyone who says SRAM brakes make turkey gobble and noise, this process is probably not done correctly because most Guaranteed. of my SRAM brakes do not make those noises. Yeah. Same. But you know what the hardest part about that is? Patience. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> because, oh my gosh, wait, having to go up a hill and then wait, come down like 20 times. We have like, this perfect hill outside of the shop. I pedal know. it all the way up to the top. And you can get in almost every 
perfect your five times yeah, mm-hmm. than the one hill. Pedal, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So like downhill like that, it's okay. Because I've heard some people say you got to do it on flat. Well, what would it make a difference? I don't know. Well, as long as you, as long as you're going around, you know, 15, 20 ish miles per hour, and yeah. then just grab them both. Not not like hard pull, but just like grab them both kind of gently and come to a slow roll, and then let off, get up to speed again, do the same thing. So do that five or ten times. Okay. Yeah. So and it's it's way more important when you have brand new rotors. Yeah. Yeah. Like brand new rotors and brand new pads take a lot. Like you're gonna have to do that process probably three or four times. Yeah. If you just do new brake pads and you got rotors that are already bedded in correctly, this whole process goes by like way mm, quicker. Mm, right. Yeah. You just do it like five times yeah. and you're done. Sweet. Yeah. But that's the way to do it. That's what it says in the manual. It's really important. I guess the big things to just avoid, don't drag them down a hill that's completely incorrect and can destroy the pads and rotors. And don't just like yank them to a stop um, when they're fresh. And that'll make them more powerful if you break them in correctly and prevent them from having all these squealing and gobbling sounds issues and stuff like that. Oh, gobble, gobble. Gobble, yeah, that's good. That's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, next question here is, when do you see the MTB world getting back to normal? And then another question, which is related, are, are there any bikes available? Mm. So as far as MTB world getting back to normal, I'm assuming that question is related to supply issues. And the entire industry is still in, uh, I won't say a disaster, but just a, just in a big frustrating annoyance of a situation where supply is just very, very limited. And that dates all the way back to, you know, when the pandemic started and all these factories that make all the products shut down for a few months and then they fired back up and then there was a huge demand in 2020 because the sport got really popular and everyone was riding more and getting into the sport. And then now there's all these other weird problems, right? Like all the ports are jammed up, which you probably hear about this on the news and Even anything. Even raw materials. Yeah, mm-hmm. raw materials, just like all sorts of strange issues that all relate back <clears throat> to just odd ramifications from the pandemic at large and the bike industry is definitely in an issue when it comes to availability and and problems like that i have been myself trying to talk to all the biggest brands that we sell and people that i really respect that have been in the industry a long time and try and understand what their predictions are and most people are feeling like spring summer of 2022 is kind of the optimistic things will get normal-ish by then Uh, a little bit more pessimistic is like you know January or Q1 of 2023. Cool. Uh, it's it's tough to say. There's there's some indicators that you know the popularity of mountain biking and, and cycling of all forms is not really all that much popular than it was in 2019. So 2020 was a bit of an anomaly. So those indicators are a bit concerning because you have a lot of these big brands and a lot of these larger component companies that are sort of eating up all of the supply like capacity right now all the manufacturing capacity and there's this prediction that they're going to make too much product Mm. and we're going to come into next season and people are going to finally get these massive orders of bikes and components and the popular like kind of assuming that the popularity is what it was in 2020 but it's not going to be and then there's going to be this big inventory glut so there's a lot of various sort of schools of thought on the topic but overall i mean from my perspective i think it's going to get better coming into next spring summer i don't think it'll be back to kind of how it was in 2019 but i think it'll be significantly better and, and not as pro- it's, it won't be problematic enough to where people are constantly asking about it and we're constantly telling people stuff's out of stock every day and in regards to bike availability we are getting more trickling in liam you're familiar on what's like our own stock that's coming into the bike brands we carry yeah i don't know full stock levels right now but i mean we always have a couple bikes in stock um I know right now we have a Mondraker Super Foxy. We have, I think, two Revel Ranger XT builds in XL. I think we have two SB115s um, and more than that. So, like, there are bikes here that we do have in stock. Uh, so, if you're ever curious, just give us a call on our site. There is also a filter menu option for availability. Click that in stock, and you'll be able to see whatever we have in stock. That means it will ship out uh, within a day or two. So, Mm-hmm. We got a Ranger frame back there too. Oh, and we a do. Ranger frame only. Yeah. Like whole size large, I believe. Yeah. So yeah, there is there is stock trickling in, and, and bikes are coming 
back to availability slowly but surely. I mean, it's it's kind of interesting because mm -hmm. as a consumer, you probably try and go and buy something and you have an issue because of stock levels and you get frustrated. But realistically, there's a lot of brands and they're all on totally different schedules and work with different manufacturers and different timelines. So it's not like it's just all gone. Like it's just stuff that trickles in and trickles out. So the best thing to do is contact us, you know, drop like every product we have on our website, you can drop your email, be notified when it comes back into stock and just contact us for ETAs, things like that. So you just need a little more patience, a little more communication these days when you're buying anything bike related, especially a complete bike. So that's kind of what's up with the, uh, the bike industry at the moment. Speaking of that, I thought this was a good question. We've kind of answered this question before in YouTube videos, but I think it's always an interesting one to yeah. talk about. I kind of love this question. I like it too. Yeah. Carbon frame and low spec, as in carbon frame mountain bike, low spec, like lower end componentry, or alloy frame and high end spec, mm. nice drivetrain, suspension, et cetera. My, it's a tough one. My answer is definitely alloy frame with nice parts because i think the components make like how the bike operates like the difference between a carbon frame and an alloy frame is kind of negligible like it's it's there it's arguably there uh but the difference between lower end wheel set tires brakes drivetrain suspension like that's huge like anyone could notice that so i'd always go alloy frame with higher end parts what do you guys think yeah i William. i totally agree um to be honest, I wish more bike companies made high-end alloy frame options. Um, I think YT releases like one a year, limited numbers of like uh, alloy frame with their full highest end part spec, and it like sells out in 24 hours. Like, yeah, it's like, like there's clearly a demand for bikes because yeah. like if you have an al good suspension platform, alloy frame, the whole bike is a lot more affordable than a carbon frame. You put good parts on it, and now you have a bike that's got it works great. It's got great parts on it, and it's not nearly as expensive as a yeah. carbon bike. And especially when you're talking about, like, a, you know, I guess a big big trail bike or an enduro bike, um, you're talking about 30 pounds or more. You're only talking about a pound, pound and a half between a carbon and alloy frame. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, that's the other thing. I mean, I think back in the day, carbon was like, whoa, carbon, carbon, it's lightweight, it's this, it's that. And, I mean, now it's, it has a nicer ride feel to it, but it's... I mean, every brand has made all their carbon frames for yeah. the most part when you're talking trail bikes and longer travel, like just so beefy because they don't yeah. want them to break that they're not really any mm. lighter than alloy frames. Like, I'd actually asterisk on that. I don't think as a carbon has a better ride feel. I think it has a different ride feel. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I guess that's an opinion. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty torn on this. I think it depends on the kind of bike you're going for. Yeah. Like if it was maybe, you know, XC, you know, towards that end of the spectrum, I'd probably go for the carbon lower end components with the you know idea that I was probably gonna upgrade some of these later. And then if it was more of like a big mountain or like enduro or even like a park bike, I'd probably go with the alloy with the nice components. Yeah. Even if you had a mm. heavy wheel set on the XC bike. But Jared's also addicted to upgrading his bike. Yeah, he is. So that's another thing. In this. <laughs> it's like he, 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 carbon he, and low spec, asterisk, but I'm gonna upgrade everything in the entire bike in the next six months. Like, yeah. well, yeah, then just get that one because then exactly. you're gonna have, well, have the high end bike with carbon parts. I've actually done, I've had this dilemma and I did this before. Like my first like really nice brand new mountain bike was a like Nomad 3 in 2015. And I got the C build, whatever, and it was all like alloy everything. And lo and behold, I upgraded everything, so. And then it was really sick at the end. So there you go. I don't know. But yeah, obviously it cost me way more money in the long run, but let's not get into that either. <laughs> I also just really like raw alloy frames. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like, like raw too. Big fan. Yeah. What? Oh. oh, that's a good time to swap. Yeah. Okay. We can just swap. Yeah. That question is basically done. Cool. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, can I read this one? Can I read this one? Can I? Yeah. Yeah, let me just confirm well, when those bibs are coming in. Are okay. we actually going to say dickhead? No, I'm going to say bleephead. <laughs> who, who did that? Kettle updates bleephead. That was Jeff, actually. Oh, that was you. Okay. <laughs> That's why I put it in there in all caps. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, customer actually said, will <laughs> Kettle Mountain ever make a bib? Oh, nice. And Jeff also put <laughs> Kettle Mountain updates dickhead. <laughs> October, right? Oh, I think so. Cool. We're just confirming. Okay. Was it the last? You ready? Go. Okay, next question. Will Kettle Mountain ever make a bib? Huh. Well, we we're so glad you asked. It's one of the original Kettle Mountain products. We do make a bib, and it's, and it's awesome. It's really good. It's the best bib. It's probably the best Kettle Mountain product, at least for mountain bikers. But it's sold out because it's sold out. it was good. It's really and good. And 
oh. non from a like completely non biased that we like kind of own kettle. Mm-hmm. It is my favorite enduro bib, meaning it has pockets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's got a really good chamois, good design, little grippers on the legs, and it has three back pockets yeah. that sit in a nice spot on your lower back, which yeah. is good. And it's durable. I've had mine for like two or three years, and it's like still like now. Yeah, that's a long time to have a bib. Yeah, it is a long time. Long. You don't want to see it, but. Yeah. <laughs> or smell it. <laughs> or smell it. Yeah. Is but the it chamois still that like really nice blue color like it is when it's brand new? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> oh, right, and so then, well, they're out of stock. When can we get more, Jeff? Yeah, uh, we're hoping October or November we should be getting more Kettle Mountain bibs. And at the similar time, we will also be getting some new pieces that we've been working on for Kettle, which are uh, lightweight and midweight jackets and hoodies and some, like, nice new tech tees. So, yeah, we're constantly working and developing Kettle stuff all the time. Speaking of which, right now Mm. I'm currently wearing some prototype lightweight travel pants that we're making. And I am directed to go out behind the shop and walk in a bunch of bushes to test this fabric and its snag resistance. <laughs> Strange things you got to do when you're developing and testing a pair. Can we uh, document you doing that, please? Sure. I'd love, love to see it. Just get like a nice zoom in of me just like out behind in the bushes. <laughs> like <laughs> Walking through all the dead brush back walking there. Walking through yeah. dead brush. I'd love to see that. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's been a lot of interesting things going on with Kettle of like as as we build out the catalog and test new stuff and I've been doing a lot of weird things like that that <laughs> I normally wouldn't do. But you know, when you're building an apparel brand, you gotta do what you gotta do. It's been pretty fun. It's a fun yeah. project. I actually coming don't, along well. Don't think that's too far off from like what you normally do though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I do like, sometimes do hikes that and go don't on a, include trails. Go on a bike ride yeah. with you and it's more of a hike that I brought my bike to, go on a hike with you and it's more like a scramble slash free walk mission yeah i I certainly have gotten bored of just being on normal trails of any kind like if someone's already been there i'm not really that interested so my favorite thing is finding these like weird rock formations or lakes and then just trying to find my way there you're trailblazer i'm a trailblazer you're a trailblazer they've named things after you (laughs) (laughs) like remember when we did that uh big hike and i made up that thing called and i called it jack sparrow's tavern (laughs) and it was just a rock formation i found oh yeah and i led uh, i think it was originally like just you were gonna go and then uh, several other people end up going like five people end up going and we did this big hike and then like little rock scrambling going on and then we went down this big hill that was super steep and and, and jack sparrow's was it jack, Tab, sparrow's, jack sparrow's tavern tavern <laughs> made that up yeah uh it was only found from just google map find oh, yeah. and we had no clue if it actually existed and or it was like a real cave it wasn't really it was cool though and no one even went it but me because it was so covered in poison oak oh nice <laughs> like, oh yeah the entryway was so scattered and just rich poison oak that no one wanted to go in it seems yeah. reasonable and then we walked out like three miles in this dry creek bed and everyone had their ankles were so beaten well, we were so tired we we took an uber back to where we parked <laughs> oh my god <laughs> well yeah because we like yeah we uh, the route wasn't a, a great loop route but we tried to make it a loop we yeah. would have ended up walking like four miles back in Canaan Road. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's like unbelievable how much more tired you get on a hike when you're just not hiking on a trail and you're just hiking like piles of rocks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's and kind you're of like, fun. oh, we went like 300 feet. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this is like up by Ladyface Rock kinda, or something. You're, exactly. Yeah. 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 This is the kind of stuff that I like to do mountain bike, do crazy hikes, travel, and that's kind of like what we're building Kettle Mountain Apparel to do. So it's good fun. So Got to make about. stuff that you works for that stuff. You brought it back. Full circle. Full circle, dude. Full circle, Kettle Mountain. Full circle. Let's go. All right, Jared. <laughs> Sick. Oh, I this love next, this question. Next question's for you. Oh. How do you feel about lasagna? Well, let me tell you, I freaking love lasagna. Lasagna is one of my favorite Italian dishes. My mother makes homemade lasagna every year for Christmas. I love it. Is your mother's lasagna your favorite? Or have you had better? Um... <laughs> She yes. listen to the podcast. <laughs> yes, no. It, hers is great, but um, uh, where did I go? I went to this place called Nonna in Westlake, and I had their lasagna, and it was unreal. So, mm. Mom, yeah, yours is amazing, but I'd say Nonna's is right up there. I don't really care for lasagna. Probably never ordered at a restaurant well, my entire uh, life. You yeah. know, Jeff, <laughs> you can leave, okay? It, it I like Nookie. Oh, you what? Gnocchi? Good. It's gnocchi. 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 gnocchi? Yeah, whatever. You like gnocchi, but you don't like lasagna. I don't know. I've just never really had any lasagna that impressed me. Well, no, let me get you some mamas or nonas. Maybe I, maybe I need <laughs> some of that. Do you like lasagna? Uh, I don't do dairy, so I don't think I've had lasagna in probably 10 years. Oh. 
Um, you guys are serious. I have liked out. it in the past, and I do. I mean, it's basically I do really love like like a spaghetti bolognese. So yeah. like basically same thing. Right? Yeah, just more noodles or just like flat ones. Yeah, it's this all about how the noodles. Long on this topic, it's all about how the noodles hold the sauce. <laughs> that's that's the difference. That's the thing all right. About pasta. And on that note. <laughs> <laughs> Jared, quote, it's all about how the noodles hold the sauce, end quote, Erickson. Yes, sir. You should put that as your name on the Ooh, website. It's all about how the noodles hold the sauce. Okay, next question. Secret grips, question Ooh, mark. What are these secret grips? Uh, we've been picturing some grips that are not out on the market yet. and Teasing, you could say. We're, te- <laughs> 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 we're teasing. We're teasing. Yeah, we've we've got some some fancy new components that are secretly being teased that we're pretty excited to show everyone and tell the world about that do some interesting things in terms of philanthropy and giving back to the trail networks. Mm. But we can't tell you until October or maybe November. Or who knows? <laughs> so we'll tell you then. But or so maybe <laughs> you will be able to buy secret grips, hopefully within this year. Soon. Yeah, yeah, totally. Stay totally. tuned for secret grips. Another great question here. Mm. Do you, Jeff, and Jared use the same hair care products? This is a really good question. So the answer is no, because <laughs> uh, I'm like a, a, a dry Irish-German guy, and I don't really need shampoo, and I never really wash my hair, <laughs> just with water on occasion or Crazy. ocean water. And Jared is a thoroughbred Italian man with really greasy hair. We've had this discussion several so times. So greasy. So like the, the we have to wash our bodies and hair very differently. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, my hair demands <laughs> shampoo and conditioner <laughs> at least once a week. I mean, I've tried doing like the Jeff Tech where I don't wash my hair, and, and my it just looks like you like, have hey. olive oil smeared in your hair. Yeah, and my girlfriend's like, "When the hell are you going to wash your hair?" You're so like, Italian that your head secretes <laughs> olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> that could very well be. That could very well. Be. Yeah, my hair gets uh. so greasy, and then I wash it, and then it's frizzy, and like it looks like I just came out of like a I don't even know like an electronic. Ecstatic electricity thing. Static electricity, olive oil yeah. solution. This is why I wear hats all the time. Yeah. So there you go. I don't actually use any hair care products. There you go. Yeah. Nice. Neither does yeah. Jeff. That's yeah. natural if you can believe it. It's natural. <laughs> well, <laughs> unnaturally natural. Bad, bad genetics is what it is. <laughs> Strange genetics. My head just looks like it's got a swirly on top right out of the womb. My God. <laughs> <laughs> More important mountain bike related questions. Handlebar rise and carbon versus alloy bars. Mm. We just did... What was that video called? I guess uh, it wasn't just that was like a high few rise months bars? ago. High rise bars. Well, no, that MTV. we did that one too. We did like high okay. rise bars explained. We actually went over a whole bunch of things about high rise bars and had all these like cool images and pictures showing sort of what high rise bars and how they lift the body up higher and why they're getting more popular and trendy. And then we also did uh, more recently a handlebar buyer's guide mm-hmm. where That's we covered things like alloy versus carbon price points, all that sort of stuff. So if you're really interested in handlebars or looking for handlebar upgrades, highly recommend those two videos because we put a ton of effort into those videos being very extensive and thorough covering those two topics, rise and then basically the buyer's guide, which covers price points, carbon versus alloy, all that. I personally always like carbon bars. I feel like they just have a better damped feel and they're they're lighter and they look nice. Mm -hmm. And I just like carbon bars. I don't know. I mean, I think it obviously very much so depends on your price point. There is a huge price difference. Carbon bars are typically like hundred and thirty dollars or more. Alloy bars are fifty bucks. Mm-hmm. So, pretty big price difference. I don't know, Liam. You still run alloy bars randomly at times. Why do you um, do such a thing? I have been recently since we go back to our secret grips and that topic because um, I'm on some carbon bars now. But I do actually. I don't mind alloy bars for like a big travel bike. Um, I don't think the weight doesn't really matter. Um, they're safe if you crash. Uh, but yeah, carbon bars feel great, especially like bars that have some type of flex in them, like the one up bars, mm-hmm. yeah. especially for a smaller travel bike. Mm-hmm. Totally. I'm a big carbon bar guy myself as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think most bike snobs like us are probably riding carbon bars. Yeah. Yep. I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. What about handlebar rise? I almost always run a fairly low rise because I kind of have a racing background and raced a ton of, uh, well, what is now called enduro, which used to be called super D and downhill. So I always liked the lower front end. So I always ran like a 15 or maybe 25 at the most rise, often just 20 mil rise. Mm-hmm. So I like that. But you ride some high rise bars here and there. Like uh, on my enduro bike, um, I'm on higher rise bars 
and that's more to get my ride height, but to kind of slam, slam my stem down to get the reach, like the real reach number I want, um, while still have my, my bars in a position. And I've also, I do come from like a XC racing background. So I was like, I had my bars really low when I first started riding enduro bikes. And then I realized like the steeper stuff I rode and kind of the gnarlier stuff I kept riding and, and learning how to ride that I kept bringing my bars up and up and up. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think a lot of people kind of go through that same yeah. phase, which is why high rise bars have gotten more popular and exactly. we're like, hey, we should make a video all about this and why it's happening. Yeah. But yeah. on my trail bike, I run a 15 mil or 20 mil rise bar and I yeah. love it. So, yeah, I'm kind of like experimenting here. I kind of like I've been running 20 mil rise for like the last couple of years, but I tried a high rise bar and I really liked it. So I'm going to kind of do a little bit of experimentation and see where I land on this. Yeah. Yeah. High rise definitely like lifts your front end up more. It yeah. feels a little better on your lower back for long climbs and a little nicer and more stable when you're pointed some, down something really steep because mm -hmm. you're lifted, your whole body's lifted up. So yeah, I don't know. Bars, bars definitely can make a really big difference. Like if you go from a 15 mil rise bar to a 35 mil rise bar, it like totally changes the feel of how that bike Crazy. handles. So Huge it's, it's a cool upgrade to play around with. Yeah. Yep. Totally. All right. Here we go. I think we answered this at some point recently. Do you use a GPS watch or head unit? What model? I definitely do. I love, uh, I used to not, I used to just try and get away from all electronics when I went out and ride, rode my bike or did anything like that. But then I discovered Garmin watches and I realized that they're really cool and simple and just less like, I don't know, intrusive than a phone. So I often don't ever want to take my phone with me. I just click my watch and record a hike, ride, run, all that sort of stuff. I have a Forerunner 945 LTE and I've become a Garmin watch nerd <laughs> and I like tracking all that stuff. I don't put any of it on Strava because I don't really care to have another social media platform to worry about in my life. I just leave it on Garmin Connect. Um, so I can look at the data, but I like it because it's cool to just like track and see all that stuff. And it's fun to just like look back and be like, Oh, what did I ride in New Zealand in you know, December of 2019. And I can just look at the whole ride and exactly where I was. And if I ever go back there, I don't know. It's kind of just cool. Like record keeping. It's like a journal a log of all your physical activities. So That's I think it's cool. fun for that reason. That's and Liam, cool. I, I, talk so much hype about this watch that I sold him my old watch and he's <laughs> using a Forerunner 945 now. Are you liking it? You used to just use a head unit on your bike. Now you just use a watch. Yeah. So, I, I mean, when I stopped racing, I was like, was pretty anti all that stuff. And I bought the smallest Garmin they made, which I think was like a Garmin 20. They don't even make it anymore, but it's awesome. It yeah. That so you just small. put like on the stem cap, little quarter yeah, turnout, right? It's so small. And all I'd wanted it to do is record my rides and tell me how long I've been riding for it. So I know when to eat and drink and stay hydrated. I did that for like four years and then my roommate got a Garmin watch and some of the people and Jeff's always talking about his. Um, and then I started doing a bunch more like adventure stuff and like, and that's what I kind of really wanted it for. So I asked Jeff his opinion cause he's a Garmin watch nerd <laughs> and he gave me probably three paragraphs about the three models I asked for. Yeah. And then the bottom he goes, but I'm getting a new one. So do you want to buy mine? I was like, yeah, you, sh you should have saved all of your time and said, do you want to buy my nine? I just wanted to talk about them. <laughs> Excuse to talk about Garmin So watches. yeah, I think I've had, I don't know, maybe a month now. Um, and I dig it a lot. I've done some hikes and routed some routes on it. So it's cool to use that. Um, I record my rides. I don't really like, I put them on Strava, but I'm not like a Strava nerd. I don't think I've ever titled a ride or like gone back and looked at it or anything. I just kind of like <laughs> send them on there and move on with my yeah. life. Um, but it is nice to record stuff. It has so much information. I don't know what to do with. Yeah. But like uh, you could take a weekend long educational course on the watch and then you'd forget <laughs> half of it by the next. Oh week. yeah. It's, the, <laughs> it's crazy. how much. What this is. watch does is so beyond what I need, but, um, it's really cool. And now I don't have to have anything on my bike and now I always have the watch on me. So I don't have to be like, Oh, I forgot my Garmin today. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, it's nice too, like, because I record hikes on it and runs as well as any type of ride. And then I also really like, like, I use it as my alarm. So mm -hmm. I use it for an alarm. Um, and then I, I like the body battery feature. So yeah. Garmin, like, if you know what, like, an Oura Ring is or a Whoop, Garmin has, like, developed all those same features into their watches. So they have a whole body battery feature and sleep tracking. And I really enjoy looking at that stuff and seeing how alive and or close to death I am based on that. <laughs> Um, like I talked about earlier when I was on that stint of like half marathon surfing merit like all that like my battery was like just I was done and 
and then it shows. And you can pretty much like see yourself deteriorating if you're not getting enough rest and getting too much exercise. It's just cool data points to look at. What do you use, Jared? Do you use anything? You're just, yeah. you're just a cell phone guy. I use my Apple Watch, but I know how you feel about those, yeah. the inaccuracy. <laughs> the <laughs> they're a great little mini iPhone on your wrist. Yeah. But they're not a proper It's great for GPS what it is. Watch. Like, um, well, somebody gave it to me a while ago, like for, you know, working on their bike. So I've been running that and it works, whatever. I just pretty much run the Strava on it. But I've really been wanting to get one of these Garmin watches because, I mean, how could somebody not want to get a Garmin watch after you explain all the features? So <laughs> It is pretty cool. <laughs> Dude, even like when we were on that last Chasing Epic trip, yeah. probably five people there were like, whoa, how does that watch records the whole ride? And they like saw all the data and they're like, what else does that do? And then it was a lot of Garmin watch talk. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Talking about Garmin watches for like an hour. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy because Garmin has so many different models that it's just perplexing and you just don't know which one to buy. And they're all, they all do way more than they need to do. There's all this feature overlap. It's just overwhelming. Yeah. And then they also just do a horrendous job at telling people what these things even do yeah you know so like no one even realizes what garmin watches can do so i think yeah garmin yeah, yeah. garmin's a strange company they uh, make amazing partner. products and don't really know how to yeah market them i also tried to i also like tried to boycott garmin <laughs> just kind of because of that and i'd really feel like they make a product and they don't care about anything after the fact yeah um so i try to boycott them but it's hard to get away from their like gps leader but yeah. yeah, and well, then you have like Whoop and Aura Ring, who are like the opposite. Like they yeah. make a pretty good product, but then they like oversell it so hard, and they've like done such yeah. extensive and quality marketing that people think it's like this gold standard of this device. And it's like, well, it's pretty basic. Like, yeah. I have an idea. Tracker. You could lead the weekend seminar for Garmin and tell everybody about. <laughs> I'll just all apply their for energy. Garmin's CMO job. <laughs> That's what I should do. There you go. Oh, but yeah. maybe I'll do that depending on salary. I'm looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, long story short, I'm going to get a Garmin watch, and uh, Jeff's going to tell me which one to get. Yeah. Zach has one. Yeah. He records his mountain bike rides on the road to <laughs> beat you and Miles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Zach. So next question. Our opinion on gravel bikes. Ooh. I think we've talked about gravel bikes before. Maybe. I, I think gravel bikes are cool and fun. I mean, I I think all bikes have a yeah, place. I think all bikes are, are cool and fun. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I like gravel bikes. I, I want mean, to get I, one. I attempted to ride a uh, like actual gravel bike with drop bars and I just couldn't do it. I just can't I just can't ride drop bars. They're yeah. just too they just feel so awkward. They are awkward. Growing awkward up on looking. BMX bikes and motocross and then mountain bikes, like I just don't like having drop bars. So I just got a gravel bike, put flat bars on it, put a little dropper post on there, bam. Basically now just a rigid mountain bike with skinny tires. But <laughs> I don't know. I think that's fun and I enjoy it. Liam, you actually ride proper gravel bikes like a gravel rider with spandex and everything that's pretty hardcore yeah um yeah i mean i, I kind of have the same background but i also did a bit of road racing and and training on the road and now i just like the gravel bike to kind of do the same type of stuff but get off of the uh um the road especially here in socal like i feel like if i live somewhere else road riding might be safer but here in socal everyone's so distracted and i just don't want to be on the roads and it opens up so much sick routes you can do yeah. on that, yeah, it is cool. on that's that kind cool of bike. That's the thing about like, it, really. I did, like, a 58-mile ride the other weekend, and I rode, like, 20 miles of Backbone in Santa Monica. Uh, it's a trail that runs across whole Santa Monica Mountains. I rode, like... Yeah, single track, like, single track, mountain yeah. bike-ish trail. Yeah. It's smooth mountain bike, but, yeah, I, like, rode out there. We rode up some dirt roads to it, rode the single track across, dropped down to PCH, and it was, like... Uh, yeah, like 6,000 feet of climbing, like 58 miles. It's such a sick route. That's and pretty cool. on that topic, I'm also, this is coming out. I'll probably be have already done this ride by the time this comes out, I'd assume. But I'm doing the Belgian Waffle Ride Cedar City this weekend. Is that 100 miles? 125, I think they say, but they might change the route. So 125-mile gravel ride or race, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'm just stoked to go and see if I can uh, suffer for that long. Yeah, and that's gravel bike drop bar. That'll be fun. That's yeah. we, we were all going to do that. Yeah, what was that one ride that we were mm -hmm. going to do that got canceled because that was uh, uh, lost. Uh, was it Lost Sierras or something? It was, like, it was, yeah, it was, it was near Lake Tahoe. Lost and found. It was the Lost and Found okay. gravel race. Yeah, like from uh, miles. it was like yeah, yeah hundred miles. Yeah. The put Sierra on by the, the same uh, Sierra Buttes. Sierra Buttes, Sierra Buttes yeah. people yeah. that put on Downeyville Classic. Okay. So. Yeah, I was really looking forward to Did that. Did they ever even reschedule that? No, but no. we got a sweet pair of socks. Remember that? We did get a nice pair of socks. It's, it's the most expensive pair of socks that we'll ever get. They, they canceled. <laughs> <laughs> they canceled everything for 
this year. Hoping it's back next year, especially Downingville Classic. Yeah. But we'll see. I'd love to get another gravel bike. I had that Y Cycles R Plus, is that what it's called? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that thing was sweet. I would get another one of those. Did you impulse bot? Well, yeah, I bought it off of Adam Miller. Yeah, we were doing a Rebel Bikes at, demo at in the our demo. California store. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the bathroom was like, I don't know, half a mile away. And Jared was like, oh, can I go take this bike to go to the bathroom? What happened when you like, asked Adam, the guy who owns Rebel yeah, Bikes? I don't even remember how it came about, but like, I saw he, this He like, let you ride it to the yeah. bathroom. You he rode just, to the like, bathroom, yeah. came back, and you're like, this thing's sweet. And he's like, you want to buy it? And you're like, yeah. Yeah. He like, you offered <laughs> me like, a great deal. You I just like, buy a bike. God, this thing is sweet. Just because you rode it to the bathroom and back. And he's like, you can Venmo me right now. And as soon as he said that, I was like, oh, shit, it's over. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I would totally get another one of those or like open like Liam has. That thing is sweet. Um, yeah, man. Because I just want to open up those like training opportunities, like doing <laughs> huge rides. Up. Oh, oh, yeah. Boom. Well, open is a brand and up is the model. Right? <laughs> just, so, just so people listening that don't and it's know a gravel bike. open gravel yeah. bikes are. Yeah, I would love to do like those long rides like you do, like road and dirt. Because I have a road bike, but I don't really want to yeah, ride it. Cool. You know, I like yeah. to be able to do mixed surfaces. So you're going to... Speaking of gravel bikes, we did get a question here from Noah Sears, who is, works at MRP, and he says, are you hyped on gravel forks? Oof. And there was a lot of uh, loud arguing before we decided to answer that question. Arguing, debating. Arguing, debating. I mean... Let's hear your opinion first, Jeff. How do you truly feel? Well, well, I think I think there's pros and cons to making bike products for these like microscopic little niches of riders and stuff. And... Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's just unnecessary stuff. But that's just how the bike industry is. There's mm-hmm. like a specific bike for every weird, odd, particular type of riding and way of riding that you prefer to do or may prefer to do one day. Place or situation or yeah. trail. And it's just like, it's so blurring the lines. Like you take a gravel bike and you put a little suspension fork on it. And it's like, now you've almost got a hardtail mountain bike. But if you got curly bars, but it's uh, way less. It, I mean, it, to me, it's like way less capable because curly bars are way less capable than flat bars. But yeah. some people argue and say, "Well, it's way more aerodynamic and more comfortable say. for really long, flat riding." Like, more aero. I don't yeah. know. It's I little, think the full suspension gravel bike that's a little ridiculous. I think that's <laughs> a little over the top. Um, was it like a niner or something? Yeah, like, niner yeah. made one. Yeah. Someone else makes a full suspension gravel bike too, don't they? Or was Mo- it just nine? Moots has like a little elastomer or something, some yeah. flex stay in Like it. a soft tail? Yeah. Um, I think gravel forks have a very small niche that they're going to excel in, and that's going to be bike packing or long endurance races, um, where I think having that little squish is going to be really nice, and it'll take the, you'll take the weight penalty and it'll pay off. Yeah. Um, something like maybe... The Dirty Kansas 200, what they changed the name to it, something else. 200 mile gravel race, that might pay off. Bike packing would be nice. Mm-hmm. Um, like Great Divide or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Something like that, I think they'd be really good at. And that's like, I think, where they're excelling. But I'm kind of on the lines of like, I'd rather have, I'm not going to put one on my bike, let's say that. I'm yeah. not going to put one on my open. I kind of like it to be a little bit more of a road bike to me. Um, and then I'll just build a hardtail mountain bike if I wanted that, which yeah. I'm probably going to do anyways, because I've been itching to kind of do those type of rides, but it's cool. Yeah. New products, new yeah. innovation. It's pretty cool. I'm in the same camp. I, mean, I don't you. know if I'd call it innovation. It's just a suspension fork made for less travel on a 700 C wheel. Hmm. Ouch. Touche. <laughs> it's not, it's not <laughs> innovation. <laughs> like the original suspension fork in existence was innovation. You could say evolution versus innovation. Yeah. It's, it's evolved into this. It's, yeah. People will say, I want more squish on my gravel bike. And then they say, well, we will give you a fork, sir. Yeah. And then they say, I want a dropper post. And you get the it would be. Post. This would be like <laughs> gravel. So I don't know if people are too familiar with the smartphone world, but uh, Apple's come out with the iPhone mini, right? It's like a much smaller iPhone. Yeah, we're going back. cool, more pocketable. <laughs> but the gravel forks to me would be like, what if Apple came out with like an iPhone mini plus <laughs> just in between the size of the mini and the normal iPhone, iPhone mini plus. Like <laughs> that's like what, that's how I feel about <laughs> gravel bikes with suspension forks on them. <laughs> I just snorted. For anyone who wants a smartphone oh my God. analogy. Oh, that's All right, well, we're going to finish this podcast off with the last question we have here. Is this really what we're ending the podcast with? I don't know. You got any better ideas? I mean... Shoot your shot, babe. It's, I think this is a good it's, question. Uh, does anyone <clears throat> at WC shave their legs? Mm. 
I, I, no, no way, dude. I don't. I, never, I don't even <laughs> I wash my hair, you. dude. Come on, I don't shave <laughs> yeah. my leg. I don't do any of that. Yeah, it's true. I don't. I don't really shave much. I'll say that. Um, but most of the company is mountain bikers, like thoroughbred mountain bikers that I have hairy legs. Chance might shave his legs. Um, it out well, there. I just I just sent a couple chats out, and uh, I was asking Matt and Keith because they were the two people I thought oh, might actually shave their I legs see because them. they yeah. ride gravel bikes and road bikes on top of their mountain bikes. And, yeah, they're more they're more gravel roadies than I am. Does shave his legs? He goes, "Yes, I don't like long leg hair." And then he says, "Podcast question." I'm sure. Dot dot dot. You could say, <laughs> uh, you could say he shaves his leg. Keith, Keith goes. Uh, if I'm doing crits, yeah, I buzz them. Road rash with matted leg hair bleeping sucks. It does. I, oh. I agree with that. I've had it. Yeah. And it, it really sucks because you have to clean your wounds and you have to put bandages on your legs. So especially like tegaderm's a big one. Yeah, that makes sense. And it sucks if you have any type of leg hair. And it doesn't stick that well. Yeah. So. Yeah, it checks out. Um, I will answer this. I do shave my legs. Mm. And <clears throat> yeah, no, crazy. Maybe for a different reason. It, it is for a different reason now. It yeah. was for crit racing and XC roadie stuff. Um, and really, like if you are wearing full spandex, if you have really hairy legs, it does look odd. <laughs> just, just saying, yeah. and like it looks like out of, I don't know, it looks weird. Looks like you, like you know. <laughs> like, like Jared's shirt. Like if you have a it's shirt good, on, like a mesh shirt on, but shirt you got hair, a bush on your sh- chest. Shirt on, and you can see your bush poking through your shirt on your chest. Yeah, yeah, that's manly. Yeah, but so now I shaved them for so long, <laughs> my leg hair doesn't grow right anymore. Oh, like if I were to like actually let my hair, my leg hair grow, it'd be odd. I hate the feeling of it in my pants now. And <laughs> <laughs> so road racers shave, road racers shave their legs because of road rash, not Usually, because they yeah. think it's more aerodynamic. Oh, I thought it was certainly because it's more aero. I think that's I don't know the real argument. It's there's like been, why swimmers there's do there's it. been there's been uh, but that's way more drag. There's been like uh, wind tunnel tests that like if you have a mustache or a beard, it does like almost nothing. Yeah. To drag, I don't know if that's real. It's more of like a look and style thing, and it's a benefit with road rash. Um, you can flex your calves, bro. Come on. Now, it's just part of like yeah. being cool. It's like, a style. I'm a roadie. I have shaved legs. I, yeah, I just, I just said it's a style. Yeah. Now I shave my legs because I think it feels weird. My hair doesn't grow right, and my uh, legs are completely covered in tattoos. So it looks better. And honestly, I hate body hair, so I pretty much shave everything from uh, you know, my eyeballs down. Maybe we could get you like a package deal where they could just laser off your whole body. I don't think I could get laser with my tattoos. Mm. Fair. I just asked Chance if he still shaves his legs, or I said, "Do you shave your legs?" He says, "Ha ha, no, not anymore." <laughs> so then I said, "Why did you before?" And he is typing. The suspense is on. Oof. Oh no, nope. he says, "I don't like hair." LOL. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like hair either. I don't like hair. And if anyone tries to say you're not manly or like girls don't like it, whatever. Yeah. I've never had an issue. The proof is in the pudding, ladies and gentlemen. The proof is in the pudding. Well, that's it. That's all for. Podcast number 86? 86. 86. You've been 86 from this we, podcast. Oh, I was waiting for that. You took it out of my mouth. <laughs> took the joke out of my mouth. Thank you very much for listening. If you've listened to this long, we love you. We appreciate it. Do we still have MTB podcast vendors? No. We don't? No. That oh. that giveaway is no longer <laughs> <laughs> I was about to give away more. I was no. be like, if you listen this long, send us your address. We'll no. send you a fender. No? Okay. Don't do that. <laughs> Never mind. If, if you've listened this long, send us some fan mail. Yeah, we love we you. we love you, but we're yeah. out of fenders. Really sorry, guys. We're out of fenders. Mm. Maybe we'll get some other gifts or swag that we could give away for... People got people who listen to the whole podcast deserve a prize. Yeah, send them a sticker if you want to send them a sticker. Yeah, just send us uh, your address in a self self addressed envelope with self addressed envelope with prepaid postage. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send you stickers. Send us a, a DM to the M2B Podcast Instagram account. Don't do that either. <laughs> or or the Worldwide Cycle Instagram Email account. Email podcast at worldwidecyclery dot com. Okay. Yeah. There's there's your directions. Yeah. And we may or may not send you a prize for listening this long. But if you send us a self-addressed envelope with prepaid postage, we will send you stickers. <laughs> Do we have stickers? We have stickers. Oh, no, they're not. Yeah, stickers. Worldwide Cycler stickers, to yeah. be clear. Cool. Yeah. All right, great. Well, thanks, gentlemen. Over and out. Thanks Nailed for listening. It. See you later. Bye.